Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, hanging out with this guy. I'm Ted. And uh, today, uh, I want to talk, I, I was in one of the uh, Facebook 5th uh, edition Dungeons and Dragons groups, and I, and I saw a post there which made me want to do this video and talk about classes for beginners, you know, what should the beginner play, and, okay. how, and how you guys feel about that. Before we get into that, go down to the description below. Sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter. It's a great way to get cool stuff delivered straight to your inbox, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Now, I actually think this is complete bullshit. Um, and, and and here's why. Especially, you know, 5th edition has simplified things uh, enough and, and when it comes to the harder classes and has also made the easier classes uh, more complicated. <laughs> I was gonna, I was going to I was going to say like it, it brought it it brought it all, all to around a medium, to a new yeah. Median, yeah. Um, now Back in the day, we always used to say like, "Oh, you're 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 a noob here, fight fighter. a fighter," yeah. you know. And it was like there wasn't a, there wasn't a choice. You know, like, it's like you're <laughs> gonna play a fighter, and then after fighter, you can move up to like ranger, ranger or a rogue. Right. Yeah. And uh, and now looking back, I feel it's kind of a dickish move, <laughs> and, and it's kind of a way to like turn people off to the hobby in in a sense, like. But I mean, if you looked at you know like, oh, you want to play a spellcaster. Well, now I've got to now I've got to teach you, you know, how spellcasting works. You know, you have to look through your spell list to to make options. Now I want to say this you was know. not a problem in AD and D, because it's like, well, you're 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 a magic user. Here's your here you have one spell. Right. Knock yourself out. <laughs> You know, now it's you know now it's different. You know, now you have to you know, you have all these choices to make. You know, if you wind up going wizard, you you get a spell book, but then you have to make a, a difference of well, what is actually prepared versus what you actually know. Right. Daily, you can make those changes. You know, if you're a if you're a you know a cleric or a druid, that's it's that all the time. You have access to all of it. You just choose what you want that day. And all of that winds up getting, you know, overwhelming for someone who is just new to the actual hobby. So I think with the, you know, the weapon choices and the archetypes and, you know, the, the you know, say fighting styles or, you know, all, all these choices you have to make from a non-spellcastery side, it is that median it doesn't matter what you're picking, you know. Whatever is most appealing is what I would say. Go ahead and play. Yeah, you know, fi you know, find someone in your gaming group that is open to sitting next to the new player and just helping them. Absolutely. You know, and, and they'll learn by doing, and they'll get it. They're going to get it after a few sessions. They'll start picking up on things. I, I've, I've, I've been the the legit or the unofficial mentor, you know, many times for for new people at a group, you know. And it's like, all right, you, know, you have a question here, you go in, and you try and you know help them out so that when it gets to their turn in the initiative, they have an idea of what they want to do as opposed to the whole, oh, it's my turn. Well, what are my options? So everything gets held up, and you know the new player gets frustrated because everyone's frustrated at them. So if I also feel like if you're doing a session zero with your players, mm -hmm. that you know this gives you the opportunity to you know spend a little extra time with a new player or, or another player, spend an extra time with a new player, and help them get their character uh, situated mm -hmm. and everything on the character sheet so they have the options in front of them. Yes. Um, and you know, and here's the thing: like you don't have to give them all the options of at, uh, at once, no matter what class they're playing. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be like you know, you can add to them as you go, and as they start, you know, getting more mastery, you can be like, oh, well, look, you can do this or that, and the other thing as well. Like for instance, if you're playing a spellcaster that has, uh, you know, prepared spells or that they pray for, like a druid or a cleric, um, unlike you know the wizard, which you only have certain spells in your book, so it makes it real easy. Right. Uh, but you know, like the cleric or the or the druid, just. Yo, know, treat them almost like they had the spell book, mm -hmm. and be like, "Oh, look here, you have your. These are the spells you have prepared, right?" Uh, I mean, in in a way, that's that's actually how I do, um, you know, my divine spellcasters. I I I make a selection of well, what what spells do your I default. think? Yeah, my default, yeah. and then I say, "All right, these are the these are the ones I'm most likely to use. These are the ones that I'll prepare most of the time, and that's how I'll I'll make mark my character sheet. I'm not putting every single first level spell." on my sheet because it's it's overwhelming. I don't I don't need to to get, you know, 
uh, annoyed by the choices, I was like, well, I'm not going to cast this spell. So... I'm not going to even consider it. Yeah, so you don't probably, probably don't even bother memorizing it. Right. Yeah, or you know, put it put it on your character sheet or whatever. But then being a more experienced player, and you go, oh, we're going into this situation, so these other spells might be more useful. Right. And then you might swap them out. Correct. You know, and yeah, I do the same thing. You know, uh, my son David is a brand new player, and he's playing a druid. Right. I mean, he hardly uses his spells at all. He just wants to be able to wild shape, <laughs> you, you know, and it, it's just recently. I'm like, you know, you don't have to get popped out of your wild shape. You can you can heal yourself. He's like, but I can't cast my spells when I'm wild shape. I'm like, no, you have this ability you can use like this. Right. And I'm like, oh, so like, you you know, you feed them the information kind of like as they need it and as right. they as they grasp certain things mm -hmm. uh, more and more. Uh, in, instead of just restricting them, go. Oh no, you're a fighter. You can play a fighter, and you have to take the champion uh, because that's the most simplistic. Yeah, you can't. You can't take battle master because there's too many choices there. And you Eldritch Knight, you, you have to the can spells. learn spells. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I, yeah, you know, I want a new player to enjoy the game as much as possible. Absolutely. So, you know, I would rather them go. Well, this is my idea for a character. And then I would rather go to then go to the books and take that idea and try and make it come to life for them. Absolutely. So that they keep wanting to play the game and we can keep expanding the hobby. Mm -hmm. It may be a little bit more work for all the, the for the other players at the table, and for the DM. But in my opinion, it's worth it. I agree. You know, you should get guys. You should be putting, you should be putting people and friends before the game, and, and like, and I I hear it the other way around so often, and I just don't understand it. I don't understand who you're gaming with. I don't understand the, the, this mindset, and this is coming from people who don't get the game as much as we as we <laughs> used to. When when I bring a player, a new player to the table, I'm in, I'm inviting the one. You know, in our, in our case, because we game in our homes, we're inviting them into our homes where our family is, and, and really, that's an invitation of friendship. It's right. not you know just to play the game. It's just, but we'll have this you know thing in common that we can share. Mm -hmm. You know, I you know when we started gaming with Scott or any of the other guys in the new game or gals, and as the case may be, <laughs> you know, it wasn't just an invitation to play the game. It was an invitation to become friends. Right. You know, yeah. we, you know, I care enough about you to want to know more about you. Outside of the game and not just the game, I guess. I guess it could be different if you game in a store all the time, right? And you meet up, um, and which I, I understand that some people that's the only option you have. Uh, but uh, yeah, to me, it's always been kind of weird just because of our background and how we've always played the game, right? And I, I've, I've, other than the handful of games that I've been invited to, you know, where where I've gamed at a shop. I've gamed for most, you know, 98% of my gaming life has been in someone's basement, in someone's living room, um, dining room, whatever have you, and, like, that's just what it's been. Or the or the commuter lounge <laughs> well, at, at, at college. Commuter lounge or scout cabin if you're, you know, nothing, nothing's going on. It's like, I... You know, we played D&D &D at Scouts, you know. Back, back yeah, I mean, we, well. we've gamed for a couple of dec decades, and for the first time, we've actually gamed at a star store, <laughs> which is which is kind of you know kind of weird and awkward to me anyway. Uh, it's not as bad because at least, like, you're... Oh, and conventions, too. Just recently did yeah, that for the did. first time. Um, a lot's happened in the past year. <laughs> yeah. But, it, you know, um, I, I just remember, you know, gaming, you know, at Ryan's apartment that he shared with roommates, and it was me, me, him, Mark, and a couple other people. And then all of a sudden, some of his roommates came back with a group of uh, friends, and they're like getting together to have a party and stuff. And it was just real awkward and weird. Like, oh, what are you guys doing <laughs> with your with your hoods and your weird dice? <laughs> and why are you sacrificing that? Good? No, yeah, that Ma Mafia's kitchen, Mellish's basement, Steve's uh, dining room. Like the these are like my first like serious uh, places of gaming. Yeah. So yeah, I, I and but I know from the comments and just from like conversations on Facebook, there's some people that they only game in stores and at sh at shops. And, and I guess, I, I guess like there's like pros and cons to everything. Like, like yeah, absolutely. Because for us, the con has been like our group has dwindled down to like three players. <laughs> You know, two players and a DM, yeah, and and, and then you know it'll blossom, bloom up to like fourteen players, and then you know, and it just like he constantly shrinks and grows and shrinks and grows. I, I guess you know, gaming at a store or whatever is a little more um, consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, or maybe that's just as random too. I don't, yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, I, we, again, that's probably a whole different video. I, and but this is but I guess in a sense um, it will affect how you know you deal with uh, beginners at your table as well because if you're not a tight knit group and you don't know each other as well, yeah I, I, I guess I could get like oh I, I don't want the, we don't want these people to play this thing because you know they don't know what they're doing who's going to do the you know who's going to take the time to if you're playing at a store you're doing a session zero right yeah because you know i guess you have to take anyone that shows up for your game or whatever mm. um i guess well i guess that'd be more like an encounters or a league type deal but right. i I'm, i just bring it up because it's a factor and it's not one i'm as familiar with and, and neither is ted so you guys can kind of fill us in on that in the, in the comments below. But I, I'm still all for letting a player play whatever they want. So why you tell us about your experience with with gaming and beginners and restricting classes and, and telling them what they can and can't do, uh, like, share, and subscribe. You can head over to nerdarchy.com and get some sweet uh, swag. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.